What I'm going to do today is pull apart a computer from the inside and show you the bits and pieces inside. Um, how many of you have ever taken apart a computer before? That is awesome. How many of you for whom this, that this will be the first time you've ever seen the inside of a computer? That is awesome. That's wonderful. This is, you're going to love this. Um, the, the inside of a computer is a lot like a jigsaw puzzle, but actually a better metaphor, I think, and sometimes I think of these metaphors when I'm just kind of walking down Broadway, um, I think is like a model train set would be a better way to put it. Because you're putting together something that's like a puzzle that has parts in it that do stuff when you run current through them. Okay? A model train is actually a really good analogy for the bits and pieces and, and also how easy it is to put together. My, um, one of my first jobs was actually putting together computers for my stepdad who has a computer wholesaling company in Portland. So I would put these together and it was just like a jigsaw puzzle for me. I was like 16, 17. It was a lot of fun. All right. What I'm going to do is pull this bad boy apart. Now, for those of you who are going into networking and sysadmin, how many of you know what this right here is? It's called a utility key. Get one of these things right here. Come on. And carry it around everywhere. All right. It's got a little Phillips head on the back of it. And the Phillips head on the back of a utility key is the perfect size for in an emergency to get into computer screws on the top of basically any desktop. I'm cheating because it takes a while longer to do this. So I borrowed David's screwdriver from over there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open this bad boy up and show you the inside bits of this computer. And then I'm going to put it back together again, and then we're all going to promise that if it doesn't actually turn on in terms of the light later on, that no one remembers me doing this. Okay. <laughs> all right, so there's usually these little tiny screws, and I'm going to show you these because it's actually kind of important to recognize what these are. So pass this guy around real quick so you can see what a desktop computer screw looks like. Don't want to miss them if all possible. All right, what are you? You are yet another one. Come on, you. It's actually pretty rubbery. So these right here, as you may be able to see from several places around the room, are actually the terminal uh, machines that are serving each one of the monitors that you're looking at right now. These are the old ones. And uh, it turns out that there's this whole stash of them back there that nobody does anything with anymore. Oh, look, this snaps apart. Crap. So once we get the lid on, you pop off for me? Good. Okay. Oh, I see what happens. So it just pops all the way off. I haven't actually taken this guy apart yet. And then sometimes you get to use this to wedge crap out. This is an older box, so one of the screws got stuck in the side. Mm -hmm. It's popping off. Come on, you. There's no screw there, so it's going to pop in a second. Older machines sometimes get stuck. Don't be afraid. Just pop them right open. There you go. Oh, sweet. There it goes. OK. So the screws are right. All right. This is the inside of a computer. All right. Check this guy out. What do you think that right there is? Hard drive. Hard drive. Good. Why do you think that's the hard drive? Just looks like a hard drive. Just looks like a hard drive. Okay. It also has, <laughs> that's fair. It, it's got this rounded shape right here that gives you kind of a hint that there might be a disc in there. All right. This is one of the few places you're going to see something round on the inside of here that's not the fan. All righty. Yeah, it looks like these things pop out. I haven't assembled one of these machines. Okay. Are you screwed in? Good. Okay. So now what we have here is the hard drive. It looks like. We have a fan mounted to the back of it. What does the fan do? Cools. It cools it down. All right. Why do you have to cool down the inside of a computer? Okay. What? That's true. And what does something going really, really fast do? Heats it up. Heats it up. It creates friction. Exactly. This is this is just a physical process always happening inside here. And the fa ironically, the faster this thing spins, the faster the little optics in here can read and pull the data off of it. So you make it go faster. And then have you ever heard of the thing called overclocking your computer? Yeah, right. Okay, that'll be related to the CPU, but it's the principle is the same. When you when you turn stuff up really, really high, you have to cool it a lot, right? You've seen overclocking uh, mm -hmm. people modding their boxes. Yeah. yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you can just melt the inside of the machine, okay? So I just pop that aside, and I'm going to set this down here. All right. Uh, you are the... 
Do it, Sam. Okay. Move it in for it. All righty. Is there a reason the wires are twisted together? Is that just make it easier to... That's a really good question. Why the wires... Why do you think the wires are twisted together? Does it just make it easier to do it? keeps things together. It's just... It keeps it a little bit tidier in there. You don't really want to have a lot of wires knocking around in there. While they're not really sturdy enough to do any damage, you're never really sure. And if they touch too much stuff in there, it's, it's actually more, and this is kind of funny, it's more that dust and especially cat hair, dog hair, can get wedged in there if you don't have your wires kind of bundled up like this. If you have a lot of wires and they're all scattered around in here, what does a lot of thin filaments do when you blow air through them? Like, uh, it collects stuff. It turns into a, a, a <laughs> ad hoc filter. Like a exactly. Very good. Yeah, what's that? Like a cobweb. Yeah, a little bit like a cobweb, exactly. It catches stuff, so you try to do that, okay. So this right here, where did you go with the power supply? Okay, so this is the data cable, and this is the power supply. Is it the power supply? That's the power supply. That's because it's coming from the power supply. All right, next piece. Let's pull this guy out here. I'm going to show you some of the bits and pieces in the back. All right, this board right here in the back, right here, what do you think this back it's here? It's the motherboard. It's the motherboard. Why is it called the motherboard? what everything connects to? It's what everything connects to and comes from, basically. It just, it's a, it is the, the, the bread upon which the, the, the peanut butter and jelly are laid. It is the track, right, that the little trains go across. It's where you plug everything in so that it can talk to each other. Okay, ouch. All right, unplug you and where did you come from? Oh, killer. Okay, I see what's going on here. You pop out, you do pop out, awesome. Oh, come on, you. Ah, good. All right, what are you? You must be, ah, okay. What's this? It's a CD drive. It's actually a DVD, but yeah, close enough. It's, it's, it's what's drive. called an optical drive, yeah. okay? And what does an optical drive do? Put discs in. Put discs in it, okay. Um, All right. It is a way to read information. Now, what is, what is this as relates to this? What do they have in common? They both read information. Good. What else? Uh, read only and then the other one is touch. Uh, very good. What, um, this could be read only. In fact, this one right here is, it says RW. What does RW mean? Rewrite. It, it means rewrite, exactly. So you can actually read and write to this right here. It reads from discs. It, these both read from discs. Good, exactly. So what's the difference conceptually between the two of these things? Storage. One's bigger, yeah. yes. You don't take the hard drive out. Don't take the hard drive out, but yeah. other than that, are, aren't they kind of basically the same thing? Yeah. They're a disk that you're reading information on. They're both technically sort of optical drives, okay? All right, so I'm going to set the hard drive down over here. Plug this guy in. Could you consider solid state optical? Oh, I can't barely read that. Um, s solid state, I don't know if it's optical as well. I, I don't think it is. Why don't you Google it? Tell me. All right, you should be a SATA cable, I think. What do you say, Foxconn? Oh Lord, it's Foxconn. Okay. Oh, here's a good piece of something in here. Check this guy out. All right, what is? And I'm gonna be very careful when I pop this out. Is that a RAM stick? It is a RAM. Very good. It's a memory stick. It could be RAM. Good. All right. And what is this guy right here? Is it? RAM. It's memory. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna pass some of this stuff around, but when I do, I want you to hold this by the edges right over here, okay? Like, hold it like this when you pass it to each other. You don't want to put your fingers on the gold connections right in here because that can, it can create extra interference and it could damage some of the circuitry. I wouldn't worry too much about it. This is a recycled computer, so this, this stuff isn't going anywhere. I wouldn't be pulling apart a brand new box and be like, hey, <laughs> everyone put your hands all over this memory stick. No, don't do that. Okay, um, what it says on it is, and I guess I can read it here, you are a, Two gig PC3. Yep, this is a two gig stick. So this must be a. If there's another stick in here, how many gigs are in here? Four, four. four gigs, exactly. And then when we have memory in a computer like this, by what increment and in what number base do we increase the amount of memory in a computer? Two. Two, okay. And, and what does that mean? What is, what is the next amount of memory you could put in this? Six. Correct, you could put six in there. Um, you, for, for lots of different reasons what you want to, first of all, you're not going to have uneven numbers of memory. You're never going to have like four, like 13. Um, you, you could have 
12, you could have 16, you could have 18. Usually, you see but go four to eight. usually what you see is a power of 2, an exponent of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, and on and on and on. That much, uh, we haven't seen that much yet. Uh, yeah. There's there's machines right now. My husband right now is busy trying very, very hard to, to get this like, with like a 32 gig machine for memory. I remember when hard drives were 750 megs and now we are we're just at something. Looking at old computer right. ads. So here look take a look and then pass this around and pass it around from the sides right there. Nowadays you have we're gonna something that's this big mm -hmm. you can plug into oh, a USB huge. port that's like four terabytes. Oh it's crazy. Crazy amounts. And exactly. It's not considered it's like a 32 megabyte uh, solid state is not considered optical. Not awesome. Okay good. All right, what do, oh, oh, I know what this is right here. Okay, so what do we think? And I'm just going to peel this back. Can you unplug from there, or do you unscrew it? Can you, you unscrew oh, no, you pop right up. Good. Okay. What is this? It is the video card. Awesome, the graphics card. Right. And then what do you think this thing is? Wait, no, it might not have a separate one in there. I can't quite tell under the fan. Let's see. Um, it, it might be. I can't tell just from looking at it right now. It's been a while since I looked at, at an older ATI card or not. It may or may not have a separate GPU in it. What's a GPU? Graphic graphic pro yeah, graphics processing unit, exactly. So at a very minimum, though, it's got a fan. Why does it have a fan in it, a separate fan in it? Because mm -hmm. it gets really, really hot. Have you guys ever played a, a game um, or something like maybe, I don't know, World of Warcraft, something like that, and your graphics started to get chunky and, and bitted and you had to let your computer cool down to play it again, that's because there wasn't a powerful enough fan or a good enough GPU in that computer, okay? All right, I'm going to pass this around too. It's a graphics card. Go for it. All right, and I'm also going to, I'm going to start passing this stuff around, so theoretically it's all going to get back up here again and I'm going to put this together and we're all going to pretend to David when we see him in the hall that none of this happened. Okay, so pass that guy around. What's that? Yeah, you do want to dust that out. What's a, what's something that you might do with um, the inside of a computer after a year or two? You ever seen cans of air? Compressed air. Yeah. Uh, be really careful though, because if you're going to use that a long time, you can actually. I've given myself frostbite on the end of my finger before from shooting that stuff because it's also really cold when it comes out of the can. So you'll get like a little bit of weird frostbite and stuff. Don't freeze the components in your computer, by the way. All right. Are you going to come out? You are. You should be the fan. I gotta. I have to take this out so I can show you the CPU. Come on. Are you gonna pop out, or are we gonna have to fight? It's gonna fight me a little bit, but I'm. Gosh, I'm gonna bet I'm gonna win. If you all want to stick around after class and want to watch me put this together or try to put it back together again, you can. You might want to help too. Just pass that stuff around, folks. This is coming out. You are flashing. Ah, excellent. You come out. Good. Very good. Okay. Are you down in there? Oh wow. No wonder this thing is kind of busted. That's that's crap that shouldn't be there. Okay. So. Ugh. I don't even know what that is. Oh, gads, it's human skin. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the pro Inside of computers is nasty, y'all. It's gross. Look at this. You got new thermal phase, right? What's that? That's Arctic silver. Ugh, so gross. So there, this, there's, yeah, it's, it can be thermal paste, but but you, you should see the outside of it. See this, this stuff right there? Yeah, that's hair and human skin, and that's what gets into something like this. All right, what are you? You're a... You're a cooling unit. Oh, there's no fan in here. What is your, oh, no, there's the fan right there, but you look like a cooling unit of some kind. Oh, very cool. I have no idea what the hell that is. Ah, it's a, th it's a thermal cooling unit. Okay, so pass that guy around. All righty. And then what did that cover up? What do we think that right there is? We have a question. Yes. This is where some paste was, right? Something goes yes. on top of that, right? Yes, this right here. It fits down right on top of that right there. It's, it's conductive paste, maybe? Yeah, silver conductive paste. All right, what's this thing right here? Any guesses? CPU. CPU. Very good. Let's see if I can pop this open. 
Um, the CPU usually latches down to the motherboard, so I'm going to pop it open here and see if I can get it out. And if I can, I'm going to see, can somebody pass me some kind of card, like an index card or a piece of paper, because I'm going to pass it around, but I don't want you to touch the CPU. Because that I'm fairly sure will get us in trouble. Ew, gross, more hair. Ugh, okay. What's that? Hair is good at getting into places you don't expect it. Oh, yes, it will. Especially pet hair. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm going to pull it down. My cat never sleeps on it. It's always cover or whatever, but hair gets in it somehow. All right, I'm, I'm trying to get it out right here, but this is a weird little latch mechanism, and I'm scared I might break it open. Um, oh, oh, I see what happens. Does it pops? Oh, there we go. Okay, so it pops down and under there. Down. There we go. Okay. And then latches open like this. So somebody have a, uh, there you are, little guy. Somebody have a piece of paper I can put this on? Piece of paper. Okay. There it is. That is a CPU. Okay. Piece of paper. Something. Oh, oh, good. Perfect. That works great. Oh, this will this work good. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pass this around. And uh, just don't touch the gold parts on the top. I don't know how delicate they are, okay? So pass it around like that. And you don't really want to touch too many of the parts on the inside. It's not gonna it's not gonna cause a problem if you touch the side of memory sticks like that. Just don't touch the gold connectors, because that can create build up problems in it. Okay. Awesome. All right. And we see this right here. This is the CPU seat on the motherboard. All right. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's really interesting. Okay, I'm not going to bother to pop this out because this is sometimes mounted into the case. Um, what is this right here? See the inside? Yeah, that's a fan, okay? Um, so the fan right there, uh, where did the cooling unit go? The fan blows through that cooling unit. Do you see the copper pipe that ran through the, the cooling unit? Is it back there someplace? Okay, so the little copper rod that runs through there, that fan is, is conducting heat away from that copper rod and pushing it, pulling it out of the, the machine. Make sense? Okay, again, still fi all physical processes are happening here. You might imagine that the hard drive that I'm going to pass around right now as just a really big book, you know? Just like this right here is the analog to the sticky notes that I showed you yesterday, and you see the CPU right over there is like the abacus. This right here is just like that chessboard. It's just storing information. So let's pass around the hard drive, take a look at it. Okay, very cool. All righty. And the last part I'm going to show you is this right here, which this is, that's going to be solid mounted, although it's, I, I could pull it out if I wanted to, but I don't really want to because it's going to be a pain in the butt and there's nothing more pain in the butt than a power supply in a machine like this. This right here is the power supply. See all the cords coming out of it right here? That's the date. That should be the static cable. These are the power cords. They're coming out of the power supply right here. This is a barely read this guy. 88 watts? That doesn't seem right. 240 volt. There we go. Okay, so AC input 240 volt. That seems kind of low. Total power 235 watts max. That's that's pretty low. Um, for but, but this is a little tiny machine right here. Its job really only is to sit there under those monitors and serve stuff up on the interwebs for you folks. Okay? Alright, now I'm going to pass the machine around so you can all take a look at the motherboard. I could keep going. I could keep pulling bits and pieces apart from it if I wanted to, but I don't really feel like it anymore. Okay. Wow, that's gross. So just pass that around so folks can take a look at the motherboard if they want to. Okay. Um, is that is that helpful? You've had your hands on the inside of a computer, on the guts and bits now. Is that reasonably cool? I'm awesome. I'm glad to hear that. What questions do you have about the inside of the machine and how it works? So when that, um, when that company mm -hmm. That is an excellent question. The first thing that I'll say is when you say when the company made the computer, how did they assemble all the parts? Well, the first thing that I want you to notice is how many companies went into making all of these things. This right here is, where, what does that say, Dell on it? Probably says Dell on it. Yeah. Is it a Dell? Okay. So Dell made that case right there. But there's no guarantee they made anything else on the inside of that computer. This is a really good question. 
This right here is a graphics card made by ATI. It's probably an ATI Radeon. No, nope, they're too cheap for that. They didn't make an ATI Radeon. It's a Vision Tech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some you know corporate component card that goes into mass-produced desktop um, terminals like these right here. So ATI made this right here. Um, that's a it's a really good question, Ramon. I didn't think to answer that. Who's got the hard drive? Okay, what's the hard drive say? Flip it over on the bottom. Seagate. It says Seagate, exactly. So Seagate is the company that made the, the optical drive for this, well, the hard drive for this computer. All right, and now what about the DVD writable? This says compact disc rewritable multi record. Um, this is probably a standard component of some kind that's in the Dell machine. Oh, Sam, de designed by Toshiba Samsung Storage Technology. So two different companies decided to collaborate to make the DVD-R drive, okay? I will almost guarantee you that the CPU was not made by Dell, but I can't tell by looking at it right now. It's probably some kind of Pentium situation, Intel something. What's that? Core 2 duos. It's entirely possible that they're a Core 2 duo. This looks like, I don't know, maybe seven to six to nine years old to me, vaguely, probably. Okay. So yes, so the answer to that question is there's a lot of different components that go into making this up and they're a lot like a car that way, all right? Toyota doesn't just make all of the stuff inside a Toyota. There, there are parts and bits and pieces made everywhere. Um, Die Hard made the battery and uh, Toyota almost certainly made the engine, but I'll guarantee you that it's not Toyota that does all of the manufacture of the design of the car and, and maybe Pioneer put the radio in it, right? So you create this machine that works all together, but all the component parts could be manufactured not just not by that company, but in totally different places around the world. Well, you can do private, private and you can do private labels too, just like you see somebody relabel something at you know Kirkland Costco or something like that. All right, that is a really good question. Any other questions? Thoughts, ideas? Is this really helpful to see the inside of the machine like this and to understand what goes on? I'm so glad. Yes, question. It's an iPhone the same type of battery has the same components. That is a great question too. Is an iPhone the same as that right there? Conceptually? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Android phone, all of them. An Android phone an Android phone is actually an even better analog to this than an iPhone would be. All right? I don't know what that is some Android. Oh, thank you. Awesome, beautiful. I will put this back together. Okay, so, all right. Yes, iPhones, MacBooks, Dell machines like this, they are all basically the exact same thing. They're all going to, you're going to find all the same components in them with um, some variations in terms of how they store data, how fast they work, how cool they are, the purposes they're used for. But you can swap these parts out as you see fit. Something might break and you'll swap it back out for a new one that does work. All right, last questions? This is killer. I'm so glad we got a chance to do this. All right, so I'm going to put the, let's see here. Um, I'm going to start putting this thing back together again in a little bit. But if you want to, uh, you can either look up stuff like this on Google, or you can come on back up here and watch me put this thing back together again. So just kind of hover around here if you want to watch me put it back together again. Seriously, I'm going to start right now. So.